Could Hilton Stubbs be the next member of the Florida Gators 2025 recruiting class? We're going to talk about it here on Locked On Gators. You are Locked On Gators, your daily podcast on the Florida Gators. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, and joining me now is Brian Smith for another episode of Locked On Gators, part of Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We are available daily and free where we listen to podcasts. I'm Brandon Olson. This is Brian Smith. And before we start talking about some 2025 kids, I'd like to thank LinkedIn Jobs for being the official college football recruiting sponsor across the Locked On College Network. LinkedIn Jobs, can you find the right candidates for your job that you want to talk to, Faster, post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. Terms and conditions apply. And Brian, we, we've talked about Hilton Stubbs briefly. Like we've, we've mentioned him in passing before, but haven't gone too much into him. With a visit during spring practice already passed, with an official and unofficial visit scheduled, Florida Gators fans have to feel at least pretty good about eventually landing Hilton Stubbs, right? I think there's a pretty good chance of it. I've heard that he likes him a lot. He's got multiple trips set. He's going to take an official as well. The Gators are at the very least in that top two to four group. And they're probably the team that's trending the most based on who you talk to. Of course, that's rumor. Um, I, I don't know. I messaged with Hilton earlier today. I didn't, I said, I didn't even know you're looking at Auburn. He's looking at them too. Like he's taking a broad look at different schools, but the Gators are the ones that probably got the most attention right now. Yeah, um, I'm assuming number two has to be Florida State, considering his brother is currently there, correct? His brother is a walk-on for the Knowles, and, I mean, they're both from Jacksonville. Like, Florida, Florida State have always had, historically, a lot of great battles in Jacksonville. I don't know why a kid from Mandarin would be any different this year. So, with or without his brother there, that's, that was all but guaranteed. So, what is the selling point, if you're Florida, for – convincing Hilton Stubbs to commit to Florida, even though his brother is a Florida State Seminole? Well, I think the same things that are the same with Florida every time. I've said this on this show many times, and while I like to take shots at, at what has happened at UF recently, and it, they're well-deserved, it's still Florida. You still play in the Southeastern Conference. It's still one of the most tradition-rich programs over the last 40 years in college football. And it is a program that has the Swamp, which is one of my favorite stadiums to go to. And, I mean, it's close to home. I mean, it's like all the little things that you would get anywhere else you can get right there. So why would you leave? Now the question comes down to my favorite thing to always mention on this show and every other Locked On relationships. I don't know how much Will Harris and the rest of the staff have dug into that. I don't know which guy is technically responsible, but I will bet you my bottom dollar, Drake will eventually pick the school that he feels he has the best relationship with, especially if it's Florida or Florida State it comes down to, because they're about the same distance from home. There's really not much difference. So it comes down to that relationship factor. Which guy or guys is it maybe develops that with Drake? I don't know. That That's something he has to figure out, and that's probably why he's taking so many visits. Where do you see him projecting long-term? Because I feel like we, we have to have this conversation a lot when we talk about safeties, given the different responsibilities at different spots and guys that are, you know, listed as safety, but better in the nickel, whatever it may be. So where do you project Hilton Stubbs long-term? He's really good as a center fielder. He's not good as a just pure man guy like most safeties aren't. He's not going to, like, transition to man coverage and play bump and run coverage. But, man, he can read the field, and he's a, he's a really smart kid. I don't think many guys that can play man coverage and like those days are pretty much over anyway with all the bunch formations. That doesn't matter much. But I saw him make an interception this past year where he came off the opposite hash and picked off a pass towards the middle of the field from the other side. Like he just read it because that wasn't even his responsibility. And he made a diving catch. Same play earlier in the game. I saw him on a deep, deep fade ball. It was his responsibility. And the kid thought he had it. And last second, there's Drake way up above everybody else taking it from the receiver. It's just he has great instinct. I'd leave him at free safety as long as I could. If he outgrows it, he outgrows it because he'll come down in the box and tackle too. There's no question. But his instincts as a center fielder are really well evident to me because the one game I went and saw him last year had two picks, and they were both tremendous football plays. So 
I think Florida or any other school that he would go with should start him at free safety. And is he someone that you think can be a contributor early on, or are we more so looking at someone that might take a little while to be SEC ready? I hate playing freshman at safety because in today's world, they're always trying to confuse you to get a free down the field, easy money ball touchdown, but he is a rather sharp cookie. So maybe he can pick some of it up and it just depends on the scheme. I'm pretty sure based on the comments last year by a certain Florida defensive coordinator who likes to make himself sound really savvy that their playbook is not necessarily friendly for a freshman, but they just started a freshman at safety too. So I, I don't know. Um, I would think there's a role for him and he's certainly going to play special teams and play either in the nickel or the dime package, but first and 10 in the sec at safety, man, the first question I have, can you tackle and do you take the right angles on run fits? Cause if you don't, it's a touchdown. That's something they got to assert. And then finally, again, when they come out and bunch and they do two motions, is he in the right place? That's got to be a checkbox. Yes. Every time. And there's very few freshmen. You can say that about, they're going to scheme you to death. If you've got freshmen back there. They, they need to make sure whatever school he goes to, same deal. I do have to ask, because uh, you mentioned it with, with Austin Armstrong and his little vertically man match coverage over the middle of Butler and, and then that whole thing that he went where he just sounded like an auctioneer. Oh. Um, oh, I do have to ask, how difficult is it to find safety play just in, in that kind of defense where it's not just, you know, we're going to go too high 80% of the time and then single high at that point, but you do have to be versatile to play safety in this defense. So. How tough is it to really evaluate and find a, a high school safety that can do that reliably? Just looking at the state of Florida, and I know the programs pretty well, like if Rogers got one of the kids at St. Thomas Aquinas or something like that, that's one thing. And Mandarin's got a good program. They were in the state finals last year. There may be 10 programs, but like most of the time it's see ball, kill ball because my guy's better than you in high school because it's not that, your stud can't do it, but it has to be 11 guys. So you like, like schools in, you know, all across the country now, no child left behind, I think is one of the worst things ever because 80% of the kids are way ahead of that. you has got to be a better way. And you're always going to coach at the slowest rate of your starter because if he doesn't get it, well, they're just going to pick on that guy. They're going to go at him. So you have to find a different way to get that done. Even if he's the, he's the guy. So to a certain degree, you'll know college coaches will ask the high school coaches about it. Hey, is this a kid that's going to be able to pick it up? Or are we going to play him on special teams? Like they know just from asking the high school coach. There might be 10, 12 programs in a state that can kind of do that because they got so many dudes. Like STA had four guys in their secondary last year go on to college. Okay, well, that's a little different. But there aren't many. So I think Stubbs could, but I don't know how much they're executing it because Mandarin, especially in the Jacksonville area, is by far the most talented team. There's no doubt about it. So he's probably going to play more single high, too high in high school, and he'll have to adjust later. And that's the case for most. So uh, it's it's kind of hard, especially in the middle of the field, man. You've got to know where everybody's at. That corner, you're just like, do your job, take care of your spot, and you're good. But middle of the field's a different animal. Yeah, you got to literally just everything comes down to if you screw up. It's bad. You probably lose that game by uh... – Yep. By, by a nice pretty little margin there, but we are about to switch to the trenches a little bit and get to Malik Autry, current Auburn commit, which is, I mean, uh, apparently the irony. Auburn are just the irony just here. The irony. Uh, irony. Can't, can't wait for it. But first, we're going to need a quick word from Robin Hood. Did you know that even if you have a 401k for retirement, you can still have an IRA? Robinhood has the only IRA that gives you a 3% boost on every dollar you contribute when you subscribe to Robinhood Gold. But get this, now through April 30th, Robinhood is even boosting every single dollar you transfer in from other retirement accounts with a 3% match. That's right, no cap on the 3% match. Robinhood Gold gets you the most for your retirement thanks to their IRA with a 3% match. Offers good through April 30th. Get started at Robinhood.com slash boost. Subscription fees do apply. And now for some legal info, claim as of quarter one, 2024, validated by Radius Global Market Research. Investing involves risk, including loss. Limitations apply to IRAs and 401ks. 3% match requires Robinhood gold for one year from the date of first 3% match. Must keep Robinhood IRA for five 
years. The 3% matching on transfers is subject to specific terms and conditions. Robinhood IRA is available to U.S. customers in good standing. Robinhood Financial LLC, member SIPC, is a registered broker dealer. Fire TV is your destination for sports from live games to highlights to in-depth analysis. Fire TV offers amazing viewing experiences with smart TVs as well as the Fire TV stick that you can plug into your existing TV that provides access to millions of movies and TV episodes as well as free and live TV. Whether it's opening weekend for baseball, which is coming up in a few weeks, or the college basketball tournament, which is next week, you're going to want to have a Fire TV. Fire TV recently created Fire TV channels to deliver a constant supply of the latest videos when your favorite sports brands all for free. That includes all of us at Locked On and most of the big pro leagues and college conferences as well. Fire TV channels let you dive into all the game analysis, highlights, and more to keep up to date on all the latest in the world of sports. March Madness, the NBA, MLB opening day, hell of a lot more, not to mention great news, entertainment, gaming, travel, cooking videos as well. Check out Fire TV channels on Fire TV and Alexa devices. If you haven't checked out Fire TV channels, you should. Just trust me on this to learn more. Visit www.amazon.com slash locked on fire TV. Thanks again for making Locked On Gators your first listen of the day. Every day we are available daily and free wherever you listen to the podcast. I am Brandon Olson. Joining me is Brian Smith, Locked On's recruiting insider. And we're talking about Malik Autry now, who is someone that, again, way early in the process, we kind of mentioned in passing, but now. He's got a visit scheduled for a couple weeks, and I'm just going to ask you outright, what would the Florida Gators have to do in order to flip Malik Autry from Auburn? Well, Auburn has some pretty good coaches on the recruiting trail that are on the defensive side of the ball. That's first thing. you got to match that. Second, he lives in Opelika, which is literally connected to Auburn, Alabama. I mean, physically, they connect to each other. So proximity is not working in Florida's favor in some ways, but maybe that's too close. Maybe Ford is far enough away. It's a different experience too. So he's 6'6", 320, was really good at the Under Armour camp in Atlanta, even in pass rush draws, which shocked us because like guys that big usually aren't very good in pass rush. His, his stock has went way up. Ford and a, a ton of other schools are trying to get him. So I'd be surprised if uh, Auburn – didn't land him, but Florida's getting him on campus. So they need to they need to have a splash visit too. Building relationships part of it, but they need a splash visit. So they get him back for the OV. I haven't heard any concern out of Auburn side of things yet. But if he sets OVs, then I don't need their opinion. Then that, that means there's an opportunity he can go elsewhere. Get the good visits, see if you can get the OV and go from there. That should be Florida's ball ball plan. Yeah, uh, we talk about relationships a lot when we talk about this recruiting and with, with Florida and Auburn, there's been a lot of battling. You look at last year, there was Jamonta Waller was a big one. Amaris Williams was a big one. LJ McCray was a big one. And all three French players, Florida, this past off season hired new inside linebackers coach. That was Auburn's defensive coordinator last year in Ron Roberts. How does that help float Florida for Malik Autry, where, yeah, he, he committed afterwards, but he was still, this was an open recruitment at the time, and Ron Roberts has to have that established relationship, you'd figure, right? Well, he's going to know the guy. That's everything. And Florida, Miami, Ohio State, whatever, kids are going to take the phone calls from people they know, and he's met the guy. He knows the guy. So, yeah, that that's a big part of it. The other thing is, like I said in segment one, talking about Drake, look, it's Florida. It's not the hardest sell on the on the coast here, okay? It's not like he, we're talking about Wake Forest trying to flip an Auburn kid. We're talking about Florida. Sometimes you have plays like Wake Forest of old when, when I see them, but that's another story. The point is still the same. If they can build the relationship further and they can show some progress, like if they beat Miami early this season, or something, they could flip some kids. They could turn the script from last year. It's still going to come down to how they play this fall. We all know that. It's not any secret. Billy's on the hot seat, all those things. The only thing you can do right now is just recruit your butt off. And again, you're, you're selling Florida. It's a pretty easy gig. I'm guessing that he will not be the only big-time committed player that's going to walk through the swamp between now and the end of spring practice. You know, I'm sure there's going to be some Miami commits, some Florida State commits, et cetera. This should be the norm. It's the Florida football program for crying out loud. 
Watching Ford or Twitter, by the way, for stuff like this is hilarious. If you need psychiatry help, there's there are hotlines out there for you, but you guys need to chill a little bit. It's just March. You've got a pretty good class so far, despite the complete debacle that was the 2023 season, and you're still in the running for kids like this that are borderline five-star players. It's not too bad. Yeah, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this part now because I know that the comments already are, are going to be upset with you saying that they might have looked like Wake Forest sometimes last year. And they did. Um, and, and people are going to be done. mad at me for not going, hey, man, screw you. Um, but I will say we watched the Utah game, we watched the Kentucky game, and we watched the Arkansas game, and we watched Florida beat Charlotte 22-7. to So – I, I can't, I can't, I can't, without looking like a jackass, I can't, I can't say anything about that. Um, I watched that Utah game from start to finish. That was hard. Yeah. Um, that was, that, that, that night game near broke me. That, it broke me. I, I do have to ask, and you mentioned this at, at one of the camps, you mentioned, you know, guys, Malik Autry's size, he looked good rushing the passer. Oh, yeah. He's listed at, at six, five and a half, 325 pounds already going yeah. into his senior yeah. season. It's legit oh. too. Straight up. Yeah. yeah. Long term, where do you project a guy like that playing? Because you got to figure with, with an SEC or any really college strength and conditioning program, probably going to gain at least a little bit of muscle mass, which is probably going to impact things, maybe lose some of the baby fat. But, but where do you project a guy like that long term? How do you project a guy like that long term? He's really rare because most guys that get that size, they suck if they get that big in high school because they get slow. And Malik wasn't bad as a junior or anything, but like we knew it was more upside than it was like production right now. He came to Under Armour. He was one of the first guys there. I was like, hey, how you doing? I talked to him a little before, took a picture of him. I'm like, man, he looks pretty good. Didn't think nothing of it. Then I went and watched him run right in front of me and go through drills. Okay. And then they, the one-on-ones come up. D-tackles are terrible in one-on-ones. He ate the guys up. And I'm like, his ranking about to go boom, boom. Somebody's got him at like number 30 or 40 in the country now. So, I mean, he, he changed his body. He bought into whatever the hell it is and changed his body. Now, I'm, I'm not saying he doesn't have a good trainer or Opelika High doesn't have to do good things. I'm going to go out on a limb and guess it, that if he signs with Ford or Auburn, it's going to go up a notch on the training ability and whatever nutrition he wants because you'll have a nutritionist there, you'll have a weight program there, et cetera. It's different. It's not the weight. He might actually lose weight and it just reshape himself, and that's cool. I bet he weighs 315 to 320, and he plays both one and three technique, meaning nose guard and three. He played a little both in the way he kind of wind up. It just depends on what defense you're into. He could be a zero technique at 320. Like, he's a kid. If, if Georgia went after him, it wouldn't surprise me because that's the kind of guy that you need to play. Like, there's only a few of those guys in the country. It's hard. There aren't many of them. Wouldn't be surprised if UGA went after him, which is a compliment. I know UF fans are like hearing the words UGA, but it's – like they run a really unique defense and UF mimics it to a certain degree. I think that's why UF likes him. He can play both. And it's not like you're, well, we got a red shirt him and put on weight. Uh, no, we're good. And I'm telling you, he looks good. Just like standing five feet in front of him. This is how an SEC defensive tackle should look. And it's also how a nose guard should look. Either way, we're good to go. So he doesn't have to red shirt to gain weight or, or, or lose weight. Mm -hmm. Is he ready to play for the SEC in de on day one? The question I need to see him in pads this fall because, like, he's made a jump in the offseason. Now I want to see him, like, at the high school level, he's going to get double teamed. I mean, I get it. But he still, at the high school level, has to move people against their will and make plays in the backfield this fall. I'll live 15 minutes from his high school. I'll let you know real quick. I'll be at his practice and all that, and I'll tell him, you better look good because Brandon's threatening me if I don't hear good things about you. You know, I'm going to let him know that you're you're on the warpath about it. So, but he's he's a good kid, and uh, he's backed up, man. He's gotten a lot better, and now he's just got to show it on Friday nights. So, like the frame, though, bro, that's, that's what you're looking for. We're going to flip to the offensive side to wrap up today's show with Gerard Pringle, running back here, and we, we know Billy Napier loves his running backs. But first, we're going to get yeah. a quick word from Nissan. Today's episode of Locked On Gators is brought to you by Nissan. And with this week's March Madness bracket, the highlight is brought to you by our friends at Nissan. Each week, we're picking one team that stands out, a team that's pushed it 
further than the rest, just like any of the all-new 2024 Nissan SUVs. These guys were able to take it to the next level. And this time, we're giving it to the Houston, to the Houston Cougars, who can only be described as an armada. This top-seeded team is as hardcore as it gets out there, so it's no wonder they're expected to land a top seed in the tournament with Selection Sunday being this Sunday. The Tennessee Vols are an SEC one that I, I got to say, kind of hate. Just just want to throw that one out there. They can only be described as a pathfinder. They've been, unfortunately, they're, they're an exciting team to watch, and they've created a lane for themselves for claiming the top seed in the SEC Player of the Year candidate Dalton Connect, who we saw be prime Kevin Durant against the Florida Gators, has carried the balls all season and made them a team to watch in March. Take the Nissan Rogue, Nissan Pathfinder, or Nissan Armada and go find your next big adventure at ShopNissanUSA.com. To wrap up today's episode of Locked On Gators, you got Brian Smith here, Locked On's recruiting insider, and... We're talking about Gerard Pringle, who's a running back that Florida very recently got involved in and pretty quickly got him on campus. So before we even talk about his film, before we talk about him as an actual potential player for the Florida Gators, I do have to ask, how do you think that bodes for Florida's chances to kind of quickly get him on campus here? Well, there's a couple of things. Number one, I've lived in the Tampa area. I lived right down the road from where he was until recently. That's a pro Gator area. It, it's not any any secret. He's going to have people around him that would like to see him at UF, and it's easy to get there. There's a certain nose guard that weighs about 400 pounds at UF that is from that same high school. I would imagine he would uh, have some influence there as well. I'm going to guess that it's not that difficult. It's State U, it's at the SEC. Those things I always just laugh at. If Florida had gone one and eleven last year, they should still be able to get this kid on. It's freaking Florida. So the next question is, what's the relationship like? That's the. It, it's one thing to get the kid to unofficial visit. I mean, let's let's go up, take a two hour drive, and go hang out at the swamp. The kid's gonna go. Now they have to hit the home run with the visit, playing catch up. Like I remember, one of my buddies called me like, "Have you seen this running back from Armwood?" I'm like, "No, why? He just ran for 300 plus yards against Venice." I'm like, "Excuse me." For those who don't know, Venice High School, which is just past Sarasota, arguably the best strength program in the state. They've won state titles. Really good. He smashed them last year. And he's a 10 500 meter kid. So all these schools, Alabama, Georgia, Florida, everybody's going after him now. He can go anywhere he wants. So it, it's not an easy overall to sell to get him, but to at least get him on campus. If UF can't do that and get the OV, that'd be pretty disappointing. And for Florida, I mean, you look at the running backs that they brought in, whether it's commit or portal. I mean, portal, we really only had Cam Carroll who got injured, but was expected to play a big role. What do you think of Gerard Pringle's film? Cause I feel like, I feel like Jabar Luke has a little bit of a type where he's like, all right, you need to have like good vision and certain measurables that we want to have in the backfield. But what do you think of Pringle's film? It's electric, man. I didn't like when you sent me the list today for kids to look at, I'm like, well, I already know that kid. I'm good. His film is fun. He's one of those Florida kids that kind of fits the profile of all the following. He'll hit you in the mouth if it needs to be done on third and four on a draw. But if he gets into that second level, you better break down and be ready to make a tackle. You're about to get YouTubed because he will put on this on the brakes and guys go, go run right by him. And then he'll smash that go button again and he can hit it again. He ran for over 300 freaking yards against Venice. That's one of the best coach teams in the South. So he knows what he's doing, and he's got go-go juice in the open field. If he gets past the linebacker level, it's pretty much over. Not many safeties are going to take him on or be able to hit him, and he can outrun a corner. He's he's a guy that can be a lead running back in the SEC all day. Florida already has Waltez Clark from Plant committed for yep. the 2025 recruiting class, and they just brought in two running backs in the 2024 class with Jaden Baugh and uh, Kanan Daniels. How do you view Gerard Pringle fitting in more, more so with Waltez Clark since they'd be coming in together, but just in that stable that you have right now in the running back room? Well, he's, you and I were both really high on Daniels last year. And we both said, look, this is a cat that plays in Mississippi, so he's not getting as much love. And this per, perceptional point is, you know, it's not fair, but it's true. 
he lives five minutes from Tampa. Like he's the first town out of Tampa. So you might as well just say that's where Pringle lives. Everybody knows about it. He's got going to have more ranking, et cetera. But they're pretty much the same player. And to be honest, Ball's like the big guy, kind of like Clark. It's the same exact profile. One a little smaller, a little shiftier, really good vision. Then we got a power guy. I mean, if I'm a UF fan, I'm like, sign me up. I mean, Miami wants the kid, Bama, Georgia, Florida. You know, and Clark had a bunch of offers too. Running back recruiting is the least of their problems. Like these are first world problems and they're very minimal at this point. If UF could do this kind of recruiting on the O-line, there'd be parties in New York city in your apartment right now, I'm guessing. But uh, I think they're in really good shape if they can just get one more guy. It doesn't have to be Pringle, but I mean, that would be ideal. Another Tampa area kid more likely to stick. And he's a kid that's dynamic that really plays well off of what Clark does because they're two different guys. Big thumbs up if that's what they end up with. I do have to ask, do you think Gerard Pringle is someone who can step in and, and play day one as a running? I feel like it's one of the spots where you can go, oh, like yeah. early on. Is he someone that can do? Because I think the big thing you need there is vision. So basically, oh, is Gerard yeah. someone that can do that? Like, I forget which play it is on his film, but like literally he gets into the second level and somebody from his left, like your vision's got to be really good. Because I don't care who you are, you're going to get ear hold at some point playing running back. He hit the brakes, his kid went, like his vision's a little different. And those kind of plays are just God-given. And then again, when he hit the hit the go button, that's also God-given because his twitchiness is not something you can teach. Zoom, zoom. He, he's like the road runner. So 10, 500 meters, bro. You know, if you do that as an underclassman, we are really good. Yeah, thank you for making Locked On Gators your first listen of the day. Every day we are available daily and free. We have this in the podcast. This was Brian Smith, Locked On Recruiting Insider. Catch him all throughout the Locked On College Network and every week on Locked On Gators. Thank you so much, Brian. Thank you, sir.